Sandy, welcome to the Jehu Garcia podcast. Uh, I only have interesting guests. I like to start by telling my guests I only have interesting guests, and that's the reason you are in my podcast today. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do and when you started? You are your your history is very interesting, so a lot of people would like to hear that. Um, okay, so um, what we do is uh, we basically work on normally new product development. So um, we've worked on aircraft, missiles, bombs, um, kids' toys, Barbie. Um, we worked on the space station, and uh, but normally what we work on is uh, automotive products and projects. So sometimes a car company will need help uh, reducing cost or getting rid of quality issues or mm, upgrading technology, and they'll come to us and we'll we'll help them out. So normally is that the design phase is where we can do the the best job, and then. Um, Uh, we also work with uh, companies that need um, help with manufacturing. So right now we're um, we're working on um, several different projects from a manufacturing standpoint. Um, mostly uh, mostly new electric vehicles. We we still sitting on the floor right now are four or five um, diesel engines, big diesel engines for um, that would be for. Uh, um, class eight trucks and in uh, four transmissions again for class eight trucks and we have uh, barbecues and um, um, just a, a myriad of different things uh, plus uh, we have three three wheel vehicles on the floor three that we're working vehicles. on wow so the yeah, so. the beat the, the the ev thing is just because that's where uh, a large portion of the automotive sector is heading into right and so that's why you have so many or such a big interest in that and that's why you have some of those vehicles well in, in um, nah i don't want to go to hell i think that really what it uh, what it works out to is that uh, if you do good things um on the planet god might look down on you favorably i'm hoping <laughs> anyways so um so we're looking at what we should be doing um and um And moving ahead and moving on and doing that in a technological area, that's kind of like what I'm into. So um, we are still working with ICE vehicles. And in, in the case of those diesel engines, we're trying to figure out how to make them run more effectively and efficiently and with less pollution. So that's that's what we're doing with those ones. And uh, same thing with the transmissions. So the better you can uh, make a product, the better everybody is going to like lifestyles would be better. So with the EV uh, situation, well, um, it's obvious. I mean, two reasons. One, it's good for the planet, but even better than that, um, it's the future. It is the future. Why should I waste my time on thinking about things that are old fashioned or um, maybe not as, uh, as exciting? So uh, we've, di we've div dived into, um, EVs with both feet, um, and uh, here we are. So, uh, so you, I, I, I think that, uh, quite frankly, this is the wave of the future, and I'd rather do exciting things, especially in my old age, than boring things. So, um, I see. So, so anyways, you're, there we are. You're yeah. a fan of the technology uh, from the engineer side of things, but also a fan of like what what it means in the in the overall. Uh, scheme of things right and for the planet right. so they run better oh that's cool so you're also right. a fan of uh, the environmental issues that run into it yeah i think a lot yeah. of us that are into evs kind of they we hit those two little check marks right it's like we like them because they're better cars i think or they're very uh cool machines well um, there's another reason um i used to race a lot um wow. i don't anymore uh but I do like to go fast and uh, quite frankly, electric cars are faster than uh, ice, uh, ice cars. So another, yeah. another reason. Very compelling machines. And, and from yeah. the technological side, it's like they're, I don't know people like me like to say like, oh, look, electric car systems are simpler. You know, there's not as many moving parts. And is that, is that a fair assumption? Is that an accurate 
Uh, yeah, um, if we look at the highest levels or the high level, you probably got about, um, probably have about, um, I don't know, nine, nine, ten thousand parts in an ICE vehicle, and you've probably got about um, 4,000, 5,000 parts in a, um, in an electric vehicle. So, wow. but if you start looking at things like, oh, the laminates and th you start tearing it down to uh, minutia stage, then, then they've got about the same amount of parts, but at the end of the day, the, the, the laminates are all exactly the same. Um, and um, the electrical wire that you have in a stator, it's one long piece of, piece of copper. So these things, um, these things kind of average out. Um, but, but at the end of the day, uh, what's really important is maintenance. And maintenance on an electric vehicle is next to zero. And maintenance on a on a uh, ice vehicle is uh, significant. So it's quite high. Yeah, because yeah. an ice ice car. It's mostly mechanical. Well, it's got a like, computer now, and it's got quite a bit of electricity. It's got a lot of there. computers. There's a lot of computers inside of a car. Yeah, So a right. uh, nice vehicle. And um, at the end of the day, when you start averaging everything out, you know, um, this one's got an engine control module. This has got a battery mo uh, control module. This has got a, um, a uh, inverter and on and on and on. You start fiddling around, and those things kind of come out almost as a wash. It depends on how good the design is. Tesla's designs are quite good. So um, it's pretty much a wash. If you look at a Bolt or maybe um, an ID, uh, ID4 or something like that, then um, you get you get more electronic stuff going on. Mm -hmm. They've got too many boxes. But hey, um, uh, everybody's moving in the right direction. Um, you know, this is a very similar situation from moving from, um, and moving from steam power i mean that was good for a few hundred years and uh and then getting into diesel and diesel electric um now we're moving from um internal combustion to uh full electric and it's the right thing to we just you know it's just like everything else horses to cars to evs seems like a fair a fair um um, way to way to move. It's uh, it's good for the economy, good for um, ecology, good all the way around, and it's fun. They're they're a lot fast. They're fast and fun. Fast yeah. and fun. Yeah, again, hits all those little marks. We like fast cars. We like simple cars. We like yeah. new technology, right? Uh, and it's good for the environment. I mean, come on, how is it right? Yeah. So the trifecta. Right. Yeah. So so from an engineering design, I mean, so would. You're, I mean, for from a lot of us, right? Like, I, I'm not really a car guy. I'm turning into a car guy apparently, because now the, but really the the catalyst for me to become a car guy was the the, the Tesla, you know, the electric car. Yeah. Uh, I wanted a car that was that was exciting, that was new, that was you know innovative or whatever. And there was nothing. I looked at BMW and I'm like, what are these guys doing? They're just doing the same old thing they've been doing uh, forever, right? And so I thought. Yeah. At that time, Tesla had announced their new car, and I thought, whoa, this is electric? Like, wait, wait, wait a minute. So then I couldn't buy one, so then I had to make my own. You know, that's, So that's my, my entry into this thing. So for a lot of us, that's how you come into the, our, our realm, right? Like, we're fans of the mission, of Elon's mission, of the car, yeah. you know, the electrification of... Uh, you know, of, of the automotive world and stuff. And then you, you come up because you are an engineer that takes cars, buys them, right? Or have bought them and then tear them apart. And then you analyze down to like yeah. very gradual detail, right? Like how they're built, how they can be. And then that information, you you you're, you sell it to, there's customers that buy it, right? For, for you. Right. From you. So, yeah. So that, that part of our business is uh, probably less than, Less than five percent. Ah, okay. Um, we do mostly what we do is for com uh, companies that mm, want to keep that information to themselves. But um, but I will tell you that um, long before Tesla, maybe even before you were born, there was a uh, there was an electric vehicle that we worked on, which was wow. the EV1. And the EV1, yes, the one behind. Look at that. One. 
Uh, and on the other wall, there's a bunch of other things that talk about the EV1. So um, we worked on that. And you mentioned BMW. Um, the first electric car that we did on spec was the uh, uh, the BMW i3. Tearing that apart, um, man, the technology in there was astounding. We were really impressed. Nobody else was, though. Nobody wanted to talk about it. Uh, there's a um, uh, there's another thing hanging on a wall. I don't know where it. I don't know where the article is, but this is um, this is what my picture looked like. Is oh, here it is, right here. There it is. So um, uh, this is uh, this was out of uh, the SAE magazine um, on the anniversary of the hundredth anniversary of uh, of the car. And so, uh, you know, what's your projections? And I said, oh, 100 years from now, the car will float and it, you'll, you'll be able to control it with your mind and it'll be electric and there's gonna be big clouds that'll uh, generate electricity so that you won't have to have any radio lines. And, you know, all this stuff had already been talked about by, um, by Nikola Tesla. He said that there's, there should be no reason why we couldn't uh, convert, um, um electrical waves into something that would kind of distort gravity and on and on so i put that up what did the other guys say <laughs> oh the big v8 in a hundred years from now we'll still have big v8s so um uh when we tore apart the bmw i3 we thought um people were going to be interested in the new technologies and guess what we were horribly wrong they didn't care at all they didn't care because why well because we got big V8s and, and that and not even Tesla, and not even the BMW people felt that it was worthwhile. And wow. this morning I had, uh, I had, today's been a big talking day. So if I start coughing, I'll tell you, I'm not, I don't have COVID. It's just, uh, no, not yet, but uh, if it happens, um, there's a secret cure for this, scotch. You can't go wrong. If I start coughing, um, scotch works. Kim, my lovely assistant here, will run off, grab me some scotch, and I will swill that down, and I won't cough anymore. <laughs> but in the interim, um, yeah, we we were really surprised. No one wanted to know anything about the BMW i3, but it was loaded with. I mean, they welded, um, they they did uh, aluminum die cast parts and welded them to extrusions. No one had ever done that before. The battery pack was really extraordinary. It was made so that you, if it wore out, you could pull out the battery out of your car and you could put it in your house. And uh, we thought that that was extraordinary. And uh, they, they did a lot of really, really cool things, except they didn't do a real good job on the styling, which was the most hideous of all cars ever. I cannot believe how ugly a BMW i3 is. Really? That's interesting. Because yeah. I don't think it is ugly. Uh, well, I... you and there's maybe a dozen others that think it's cute. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but not me. I thought it was hideous. You um, thought it was hideous. But uh, it didn't look like a BMW. And it didn't drive like a BMW. It did and drive. I hated it when the, uh, when, the, when the extended range little motor came on and scared the living daylights out of me. It would kick in, yeah. and it was it was kind of it was it was weak, right? It was noisy, it was weak, and it didn't have the same amount of power, kind of thing. Yeah. So here's yeah. here's a little aside story because um, not too many people know this, but uh, but anyway, we had uh, Ricardo in talk about a project and whatnot, and one of the English guys came in and he said, "Hey, you're, uh, what do you think about the uh, the the i three that you're tearing apart?" I said, eh, "It's got a lot of good stuff. I'm not." I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say about the engine. He says, oh, well, we designed that engine. I said, really? What a pile of shit. <laughs> and we got into a big discussion. Apparently, he was the lead engineer on it. So, oh, um, no. okay. yeah, I said, why is it so noisy? What it, did you put, like, bolts in the top of the, the cylinder head? So, or, sorry, inside the combustion chamber to make that extra noise? And when I had no yeah. sense of humor. English guys <laughs> sometimes <laughs> don't have any sense of humor. <laughs> but on on uh, on the electrical mode, it was pretty fun car to drive, right? It went fast. Yeah, I as remember... long as you as long as the extended range motor didn't kick in, it was a it was a, it was fun. But it was short range. I mean, short range. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was a tiny little battery, and it was a little motor, and it was a little car. Yeah, it was almost meant to not. We've always claimed that a car manufacturers don't 
make cars like electric cars ugly on purpose and make them expensive, right? They sub out all this uh, work so that it's yeah. really expensive, so they can say like, "Hey, this we don't make money here. These are not, you know, this there's not viable cars that we can make because they don't really deep down they don't want to make them." Is is that no. a fair assessment? No, they don't want to. They they do not want to make them, and they don't put. I mean, they're not serious, so they don't put the right people on the job. Now, the BMW i3 had a lot of really good people, but they were um, crushed, I guess, uh, pushed into a corner and not given free range to do things. Uh, but, but like I said, there was plenty of really good ideas from a technology standpoint on that car, and still is. And by the way, I don't know if you're aware of it, but if your viewers want to have a 54,000 page report, they can go to Monroe, um, uh, Monroe Live, YouTube, whatever. Anyways, there's a page and you can buy it for 10 bucks. Ah. Because I lost so much money on that thing. <laughs> we just, uh, we just, uh, we're selling it to people who want to know about, uh, you know, how, what, what is involved in one of these reports. So for 10 bucks, you can buy a 54,000 page thing um, Corey go. will, Corey, our president will uh, be happy to help you out, but it will oh. cost 10 whole dollars. So. $10. Wow. For 50,000 pages. Mm -hmm. So, so that means you went granular. I mean, you went down to how they, cause that was a pretty crazy car. It had a carbon fiber, like unibody yep. kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, Everything's in there too. Every adhesive, every, wow. everything, everything about uh, how they do that. Plus there's videos in the, in the uh, appendix and all kinds of stuff. Wow. But like I said, 10 bucks cash, cash money. Yeah. Wow. So if any, Although we will accept credit cards. Credit cards, well. Bitcoin, you'll accept Ethereum. Bitcoin. Probably. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the whole thing. Well, that's good. Uh, yeah. And then we will get to see the kind of work that you do evaluating these, you know. Uh, so yeah. then now you're kind of doing that. You're doing that privately for companies that want to do that, right? And they, they get your services. But you're also now becoming kind of like a public person because now you have a YouTube channel, right? And you're doing yes, quite a bit of videos. Do. You're going into podcasts sort of like this one and talking about the stuff that you do. How How is this going? How are you liking this part of the, of the business? Well, um, I never liked my picture taken. And now, um, so I... I'm looking for a new house and um, uh, cause we've been living in a condo for a long time. And my wife and I, you know, mostly we work. So a condo kind of like works out, but now it ain't working out. So um, the neighbors are too close and, and whatever. So we decided to look for a new house. So I'm looking for a new house <laughs> that's real close to the Tesla center because I, I'm going to be buying a, um, I'm going to be buying a cyber truck. So, um, and giving up my Jeep Rubicon. So, um, so anyway, um, I, I'm looking near, near the Tesla, uh, portal, um, uh, for delivery and whatnot. And, um, and uh, I said, I'm just going to drive in and find out if they've got a super, uh, superchargers here. So I drive in the, uh, in the gate or whatever, not the gate, but the parking lot. And, um, and, um, I swung in, looked around, I didn't see anything. I pulled back out and I start, I might as well leave. I don't want to go inside. So I, I come riding up and, and a kid in a black Tesla shirt comes running over with a mask on. And he said, yeah, Sandy, what are you doing here? <laughs> Whoa. You're talking about <laughs> frightening. I mean, I, I don't know that many people and I'm not, but these guys all knew me. And the next thing I know, I had a couple of guys, uh, you know, talking about this, that, and the next thing, and everybody knew my name, and it was really kind of um, extraordinary. So, um, so, I mean, that 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 kind of like says to me anyway that this has gone gotten too far, gone out, <laughs> totally out of control. So, um, no, yeah. we're we're fans of you, you know, because you you evaluate cars and you're evaluating something that that we have subscribed, right? We believe in the mission of the Tesla and the thing yeah. and electric cars, right? And, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, you're an insider in this in, in this industry and you're giving the okay? Or well, you're not just the okay, but you're also saying like, hey, this needs to, right? Yes. You, you're yeah. like, you're evaluating this for what it is. And if, if they need to right. work on 
making door panels or door gaps, you know, even like you you'll call it how it is. It's not just like you're just one of these fan right. Um, right. So I had I had good things to say about a variety of different cars that we've torn apart and I had good things to say about Tesla. And um and I also had bad ones. I mean, when the BMW came out, uh when the BMW i3 came out, the absolutely it had without a question of a doubt the best FF fit finish quality assessment analysis of any vehicle we'd ever had. Uh, I mean, it was phenomenal. Um, and it was electric and, and even though it was ugly, even though I didn't like the styling, everything about it from a technology standpoint was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, but when Tesla showed up with their vehicle, their first vehicle, the gaps were bad. The doors didn't close. Um, there was so many things wrong. I, buttons that you pushed didn't go anywhere, these kinds of things. And so initially I panned it because it deserved it. But then we got rid of the um, got rid of the seats and the doors and whatnot. We started looking at the electronics and uh, and the powertrain. Okay, and the suspension, suspension's to die for. The great, it's a, it's a BMW suspension basically. Well, mm -hmm. I don't wanna say that because somebody from BMW will say, you stole our design. <laughs> but uh, but at the end of the day, it's a um, it's a really good, very very tight um, steering system, good suspension, excellent suspension. Yeah. So the only thing that was wrong was from the uh, from the belt line up, <laughs> or from the door. Sorry, the uh, door sills up. I didn't care for that, but everything else I like. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So Tesla just didn't know how to make cars, essentially, and rightly so. They never made cars before. Should be expected, right? Like. They're well, not a car manufacturer. They're most. They're mostly like a technology company, right? And so it would be to. to yeah, be but there's no. There's no excuse for that. They could, there's people out there that could help them out, even if they didn't want to hire me. There was other guys that uh, that definitely could um, uh, yeah. could do a bang up job on their paint department and whatnot. And when I talked to Elon, um, I said, "So what was the bad paint? Well, we, you know, we tried to move up the assembly line speed and." We were getting the cars out a minute fast and well, a minute fast is a minute fast. So pushing a car out like that, the cars are, they're charged, right? They, uh, they have a charge when they come out, not like a, not like a, a battery charge or something, but the, the cars, um, have electric static charge. And when they, when they come out with that charge, every piece of dirt on the planet wants to get close to that, that vehicle. So, you know, wind up with paint. Uh, dirt in the paint. That's like a kid's mistake. So they they should have done something different. Somebody else could have. Anybody who knows paint departments would have said, "Don't do that. You got to do this. Put a oddball line in, or whatever. Extend the time in the ovens, or extend the ovens, or extend the vestibule even." So yeah, there's so, a yeah. So it it was. Uh, <clears throat> he doesn't like to ask too many. He doesn't ask for uh, a lot of help, so. But he has hired people that uh, come from the car industry, right? Like, didn't he buy, like, I know he hired, like, because he put, one of the mistakes that he did was put too many robots, was that? Was yeah. that one of the things? Yeah, he tried so to automate I, too much, right? Yeah, okay, so prior to me going to Ford, I was in the machine tool world for chip cutting and also automated systems. And um, I worked on the very first Unimate robots in uh, in the 60s. About the time your car there was built, yeah, your bus. So um, I, I know a lot about what you can do and what you can't do with a robot. So if you look at a robot and you think about what is a robot, okay? So when I first talk to people about how they're going to design their plant and what, and I talk about robots, and I say, you know, what is a robot? It was, oh, it's a revolutionary, blah, blah, blah. No, it isn't. A robot is a blind, one-armed idiot. It can do one thing that makes it an idiot. It only has one arm and it doesn't have any eyes as a rule. And if you have to put eyes on, then you've just increased the uh, complexity by about a million. So you really wanna try and make it so that it's easy for the robot to pick up something over here and put it over there. That's what they're good at. Don't do anything else with them. And, uh, they didn't do that. They thought that somehow the robot was going to be like magic, like a human being, right? Doesn't work that way. Not at all. They are not human beings. If you want things done 
in a good and right way, uh, design it so it is designed for a robot. And then guess what? You can't justify them. There's no return on investment. And I proved that when I was at Ford. That's why when other people came in and said, hey, how come you don't have so many robots? No room. Why, why, should, I, why should I extend the assembly line for that? Well, you got to be kidding. You get better this and better that. And they never sh they always show up every day. Well, that's not 100% true, fella, because they need maintenance. And, um, and that means that when they're down, I can't put a man in to get the job done. But if a guy doesn't show up for work, I can put somebody else in the job. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, nothing, yeah, but. There's no return on investment. Uh, there's another reason that you use robots, the three Ds, dirty, dangerous, and drudgery. Those three things. Um, so if, um, if, uh, if I, if, if I want to go stupid, I'll put all my, tra and by the way, it's not the first time. I mean, <clears throat> Leonardo da Vinci in, invented the first robot. It was, um, it was a, um, uh, a drummer. Uh, it was a mannequin that could play the drums. And the reason that he invented that was because what he really wanted to invent was the next generation soldier, a knight that would go onto the battlefield and, um, and swing a sword and basically kill other robot knights. He thought that was a good idea. It never worked. <laughs> and then there's a bunch of other people that uh, went in between there, but, but the best example of um, modern day stupidity was Roger Smith who said, we're gonna robotize everything and get rid of those nasty employees. Okay, he bought thou tens of thousands of robots. They all failed. They failed because the design wasn't there. And Elon Musk, he fell into the same trap. He, he he, thought he could if you just talk more. to somebody who knows about this stuff, it makes things a lot better. You don't, you don't wind up in, in deep, deep yogurt. So what essentially what he ended up ha uh, trying to do was reinvent the wheel when it came to manufacturing cars and mass in a factory, right? No, what he did was he made a mistake. He shouldn't have he shouldn't have used robots. He, he should have he should have asked somebody. Okay, so here's the thing. I know a lot about what I know. What I don't know, I hire somebody for. I don't I don't know shit about finance. I I know that I I'm honest with myself and then I go and get somebody who's really smart. Somebody who's going to help me out. I don't claim to know things about um, romance. <laughs> not good at that. Ask my wife. And um, so, um, so the thing is I, I try and steer clear of anything that, uh, that might um, uh, put me in jeopardy. Same thing is true for guys that don't know what they're doing when it comes to putting a car together. If you put a car together at production rates, it's a good idea to have people that uh, that that you know can guide you. Like before. for instance, uh, guiding. Okay, so do you know who the uh, what the, the the Dimer expedition was like? Okay, well, where they a bunch of people in a wagon train were going to go to California. They wound up getting into the mountains. They got lost. They got snowed in, and they wound up eating each other. Okay, yeah. So yeah. at the end of the day. You don't want to get a, a bad guide. You need a good guide. You find out somebody who knows what the heck they're talking about, and they'll help you get to the point you need to get to. Yeah. If you don't do that, you're you're going to wind up in um, production in shit hell. shape. What's in, that? In production hell. Production hell, and he shouldn't <laughs> have gone there. He 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 deserved better uh, than yeah. that. So he he. Do you think he learned his lesson? Is he now doing cars better? Like. The gaps seem yeah. to be getting oh, better. Yeah. The issues seem to be getting better. Yeah, we saw we saw quite a few. Like we had that Model Three, which I mean was pushed out, or the yeah the Model Three and the Model Y, they got pushed out. They were early builds, and he didn't quite understand what was going on. But when I took the trip, I um, the first one, the first really good looking car I saw was in uh, Denver, Colorado, and um, I was totally blown away. I didn't need my gap gauge. I could use my baby finger. It was mm -hmm. perfect. And uh, the interior was brilliant. The paint job was fantastic. Um, everything about the car was just absolutely first rate. Yeah, easily as good as a Bentley. Wow. It was an excellent shape. Yeah, excellent. I was really impressed. And then I saw a myriad of them. Once I got to California, I saw a whole bunch. Um, so the, the car build can't be, you can't throw them under the bus for that anymore. It, it, it's just fine. It works just fine. It's so he's learned his lesson and he 
It, and that's the big thing. Some people learn lessons and get the job done. Others, never. It'll never happen. They just, they can't do it. Yeah. He seems to, yeah, he seems to be delivering on a lot of the promises that he's, that he's yep. saying. Maybe the timing is, is off a little bit, but uh, he's usually late. But he's, he's, he's making big promises, right? So, I mean, I know people like to be... Um, critical on him i i just saw a thing where people are criticizing the fact that he he says he spent his time engineering and people are like yeah this guy's not an engineer you know they go down the minutia like he's not an <laughs> he's not a what I, who I've said seen, that yeah there's people like if you go to like twitter or whatever you know there's always idiots saying things but it's like they criticize him like this guy likes to say he's an engineer but engineer means a thing it's like a very particular thing and he's not that you know And okay, so here's the deal. Okay, what's the root word of Twitter? Twit. Okay, we might as well stop right there. <laughs> I don't do any of that crap, Ola. But I'm going to tell you, yeah. um, the this is this is something that uh, that that was revolutionary in its day. Okay. There was 50-50 chance that there would be electric cars and ice vehicles, and they were selling at about the same rate. Okay, okay. but mm -hmm. then something happened in 1908. A guy who shouldn't be able to, a guy who worked on cash registers invented the electric starter for a car. His name was Boss Kettering. Know what else he invented? Fast drying paint. Wow. Um, and I'm and also Freon. He was the guy who invented refrigeration. Wow. You know, he was giving a speech one time and some jamoke actually came up and said, hey, you have no right to talk about uh, chemistry like that. You're not a chemical engineer and whatnot. And this is kind of like, I mean, it, it was it was recorded. He said, oh, well, I'll have to be more careful. And the audience went nuts. They laughed their tail off at this moron professor who said, you're not a chemical engineer. What are you kidding me? Here's the deal. There's plenty of engineers. By the way, Thomas Edison, what was his degree in? I don't know. We just remember he didn't have a degree. Inventor. In fact, oh, he didn't get out of grade school. So at the end of the, how about Henry Ford? Oh, wait, he didn't have a degree either. In fact, he didn't get out of high school. At the end of the, we, we keep telling ourselves that, oh, education means something. No, it doesn't. It means, yes, it does. It means that you have the capability to learn. Yeah, Apart from yeah. that, zip. There's, it tells me nothing. Outside, I've got PhDs, I've got master's degrees, undergrads, high school, and some guys I don't even want to talk to. Because you know what? I hire talent. I don't hire education. I hire talent. I want guys that are enthusiastic, workaholics, that kind of thing. Yeah. Whenever somebody says that Elon Musk is an engineer, he, they're full of shit. And I mean, <laughs> tall shit. Yeah. I, okay. So what didn't come out in, in the, uh, in the interview. <clears throat> so we went through the SpaceX platform. Uh, uh, we looked at a bunch of rocket ships for about two hours. Then we, we went in and for a half an hour, I talked to Elon Musk. Then we did the, the little recording, which took about an hour. And then when we got done, um, Corey was packing up to get out and uh, Elon said, hey, uh, we're going to have a design review of the, uh, the Falcon rocket. You want to hang on? Uh, you can sit in if you want. Oh. I sat there for two hours watching a non-engineer. Are you kidding me? These guys are losers. Anybody that would put out something like that is probably sitting on his mom's couch in her basement, smoking dope or something. But I'm telling you what, anybody that knows anything about anything, period, knows that Elon Musk is a brilliant engineer. And that's that. I don't give a rip. He's, I mean, really? He's gone to, he went to school in, in South Africa. He went to school in Canada. He went to school. He taught school. He taught at Princeton. Oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. These are clowns that don't know shit. They're, yeah. They couldn't wipe, they couldn't shine his shoes. I was going to say something nasty, but see how much <laughs> I didn't want your, uh, I didn't want your, uh, uh, your, your YouTube thing being ruined or whatever. Yeah. No, no, definitely. So you got to sit in in one of these meetings and you got to see how he deals with this, well, his top level engineers, right? These are teams that are designing. And by the way, these are not easy. These are rocket engineers, right? Like they're designing rockets. Uh, it, it's yeah. known kind of widely that designing rockets is kind of hard, you know, rock, rocket science. Mm -hmm. it's, and he's doing that. 
So when he's doing that with the cars, I mean, yeah, he knows what he's doing. I'd say, well, and if, if he you, doesn't, if you look at the design of the um of the um the Model Y, the new actually in the Model Three as well, the new um, heating and cooling system. Um, that um, that system is is designed like uh, if we were designing rocket ship kind of parts, that's what they would look like. They don't look like a standard automotive kind of operation because there's usually lines of demarcation between this guy's job and that guy's job. So usually you wind up with more parts than you need. Uh -huh. That um, that um, product that, that we saw uh, with the octo valve and the, um, and the heat pump and everything, that, that was brilliant, uh, a brilliant way to, uh, to show how, um, um, how the product could be built in a, in a new, more effective and efficient way really, really smart stuff. So when we were looking at the rocket engine, they were talking about issues that they had with manufacturing and blah, blah, I don't wanna get into it. I, we didn't sign any NDAs or anything, but it's their product and it's not my place to yak about it. But mm -hmm. they were talking about one thing, by the way, this is at 1030 at night. Yeah, so he works long hours. These guys had already been there all day long. Elon had some kind of a, I don't know what it was, frozen dinner or something um, during this thing. His, um, his um, incredible secretary, unbelievable secretary, she came in and, and plopped something down in front of me. You haven't eaten, eat this. Okay, good. So he, he ate whatever this thing was. And while we were watching, 10.30 at night, he gets up early, works all day. 10.30 at night, he's still in there. He's still, and by the way, so is his whole team. Not just the team at SpaceX in Brownsville, but also the um, uh, the team in California. Some guys were speaking with an accent I couldn't quite understand. Uh, these guys are my kind of guys. They they're workaholics. They would get a job at Monroe in a heartbeat. That that's the kind of people that he's got, and that's the kind of um, that's kind of like what he expects. As a matter of fact, at Brownsville, they don't have a. <laughs> If there's a hotel there, I didn't see it. Um, you'd have to go to some some other city. So what they did was they they built like a I don't know haciendas or something like that, so that um, so that they can sleep there. And that's what they so they work all day, walk to the um, um, in-house hotel, whatever you want to call it, uh, grab some sleep, and then get back to it the next morning. I, actually, one of the best things that I saw when I was there was. Um, was a sign hanging on a wall. It said <clears throat> uh, something along the line of um, uh, nobody changed the world um, on a 40 hour work week. <laughs> yes. That's that's profound knowledge, especially when someone says, oh, we need more time for texting. Bull, that's <laughs> bull. That's, we don't need more time for texting. We need more time to getting the job done, so. Yeah, he's doing big things. His projects and his promises are are big. I mean, people say, "Hey, he's late or whatever." He like to be critical on him, right? But I mean, he's changing the world, right? This guy's pretty. Yeah. He's pretty special, right? Right. Uh, you've met. I him. think he. I think he's the only hero in the United States. Period. The only Actually, hero. I, I I think uh, I I I can safely say that maybe the world. I don't know anybody else, and I keep my ear to the ground. I don't know of anybody else that's uh, that's doing what he's doing with anything anywhere period yeah yeah and he's and he's making waves in so many of these markets right the car manufacturing uh rockets now uh the, the mine thing. holes uh, underneath the uh, uh, cities i mean yeah the boring yeah have you seen the boring thing that he has in hawthorne uh no. we were supposed to we were there for an event and we were supposed to go through the thing and then I think I think it was it got too hairy. Like they were going too fast, and the the, the tunnels are really small. So I think they were like, "Yeah, let's not take all these people <laughs> through these things at 100 miles yeah. an hour," kind of thing. But uh, yeah, it looked pretty. It looks it's a crazy thing. Like with Elon, is like, wait a minute, you're gonna make a tunnel, and then you're gonna put an elevator. That's craziness. Like you're just you're talking craziness, and then you go to a place and you're like, see it, and you're like, oh. Yeah, it's totally possible. Look, he just yeah. did it. <laughs> yeah. Just, just Everything's did it. possible when it's obvious. I don't I don't remember what great philosopher said that, but I use it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so you yeah, so you are appreciating his his work from I think a little bit 
different perspective because you're evaluating like the big picture stuff, but also down to the details, right? Minutia. You get into the weeds of the scars. And one of the ones you were talking about was the, the heat pump. And that's revolutionary because the, the, the heat, pump, heat pump. Oh, the heat in, pump, yeah. On the Y. Is that revolutionary because like not a lot of cars are using that technology? And by a the way, cars are using the, the heat pump. There are some cars that are using heat pumps, but, but what they're not doing is uh, they don't have an octo valve. They didn't make it so that it's in a really compact kind of a product. It's like spread out all over the car and it's got lots of extra bits and pieces that uh, they eliminated by putting in the octo valve with the heat pump system. So ah, that's where I'm, I'm, uh, uh, that's where I'm really, um, uh, really enthusiastic about what he's doing. Yeah. About that design. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. I guess I don't know what that is. I'll have to go look. Did you make a video about that particular yeah. technology? Okay. Actually, the... The um, the most purchased of all of the reports that we did on the Model Y uh, was the uh, one for um, uh, for heating and cooling, the the uh, octo valve and uh, heat pump. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So lots and, of people want to know about that. And and those include maybe other car manufacturers, maybe or people, the engineers that work for other car manufacturers, or maybe. Uh, yeah, we work for other car manufacturers for certain. Actually, I don't work for Tesla. Um, I don't do it because if I worked for them, then I couldn't make any reports. So, yeah. um, so anyway, um, but we work for other car companies. Yeah, actually, you're an yeah. independent firm, and then you you are you're for hire. These people hired you to do this work. I'm sorry, the what? You're an independent firm, and then you 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 sell your services to other car companies. Is that right? How it works? And uh, and so if if a car company wants to have a new product development. And uh, there are a number, um, but most of them have NDAs. They don't want they don't want everybody to know that we're doing things with them. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, we will help them develop a, a new vehicle or um, um, or a new system and whatnot. So when we put the reports out, though, those things sold worldwide. Um, pretty much everybody in Japan has bought pretty much every report that we have. Um, and then same with Korea and a lot of China, some in Europe, not so much. And apart from Chrysler, nothing in the United States. Wow. Well, that, let me rephrase that. That's on the big companies. Smaller companies have bought our stuff oh, because they, they need to figure out how they're going to be able to do things in a quick and, um, and efficient way. And apparently Kim just sent you an email with the website links. So, oh, there okay, you go. yeah, we'll include them in the things so our audience can go and check out your work. Um, how about in the future? Like, I have, um, I own Teslas, right? I made my, I couldn't afford a Tesla at one point, and then they weren't available, so I had to make my own car, my electric car, right? I cobbled it up. You probably be uh, horrified at my work because I'm not an engineer, but you know, I kind of did a DIY job. Um, but then eventually now I have, I, I own a Tesla and then the next car that we wanted, we like these SUVs, like all Americans for some reason, we have this inclination to get like big cars. Uh, and so I pre-order a Rivian, uh, both the truck and the SUV. And one is gonna be for us to keep as a, as a car and then the other one's going to be basically just to review it, uh, you know, share, make content about it, all this other stuff. How, do you see yourself maybe doing one of these reports on a Rivian or working? With we Rivian have, Rivian yes, we have one ordered. Um, ah, actually, we have yeah. several ordered. But um, we worked on, uh, we worked with um, investors that were looking for due diligence on Rivian. So we got, uh, we got to look at that car. Yeah, inside and out um oh, I so see. i know quite a bit about it i'm not going to talk about it but yeah but yeah. yeah so anyway during the process uh, one of our guys um like we had put in orders for rivian but one of our guys um put in his own order and um he's going to get rid of um what he used to tell us the best um suv on the planet which was the um the uh jeep um um trailhawk um he he said there's nothing in the world like it on and on and on and on but after he drove the um after he had driven the rivian around in the desert in um 
in Arizona. Um, he he said, I want one of these. Can I get a can I get bumped up or whatever? And uh, so he made some kind of an arrangement uh, that had nothing to do with our due diligence, but it did wind up with a couple three billion dollars. So something must have went well, or the the people that we talked with um, they were happy with our report. Oh, I see. So yeah. you've done a report already. Oh, I see. Um, no, that report was private. That was for an investor. For an investor. Uh, yeah. Who was thinking about putting $1.2 billion in. Whoa, so. okay. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. They, they would want to know, hey, uh, these guys yeah. get their act together. Is this going to be good or is this going to be a car that's yeah. going to be full of problems? And so they would well, want to have someone. When investors that. decide to do something like this, um, they ask a lot of questions and we do due diligence work. Um, like I said, we don't talk too much about who hired us, mm. but, um, but uh, we were hired uh, three or four times uh, wow. lately uh, for that kind I of see. work. And um, they appreciate, and by the way, not everybody got a big gold star. A couple of them, I, we just absolutely flat out said, this is not where you want to stick your money. Wow. Period. Yeah. I see. So You've again, it's problems. the same thing. We tell people the truth and son of a gun, uh, we get return customers. Yeah. So you, yeah, you evaluate that. That's, that's crazy. So you're like doing it big, like in a larger scale. Cause see, this is what we are. A lot of us YouTubers, I consider myself like a YouTuber at this point. Cause that's where I do most of the time make YouTube videos and I'm kind of doing the same thing you're doing. Right. I'm like, I, the people send me these products for evaluation and then we do a, like a, like a public review. We're like, oh, this battery is good. You connect these things here and I take it apart and like, oh, look at these batteries and these cables and the thing, you know. But uh, yeah, it's like you're doing this at a larger scale with like, you know, with the cars and the bigger companies, bigger parties that are involved in the whole thing. So I'm kind of a fan of it because I kind of, I guess I aspire to be what you do when I grow up, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, that's good. Well, I uh, um, the only difference between you and I is I, I won't accept the car um, uh, for evaluation uh, for free. Um, so uh, that gets in into an ugly territory. You know, yeah. well, we gave you the car. Can't you say something nice about it? Conflict no. of interest. Yeah. 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 So it's better if we just uh, we'll, we'll, I, I think it's better to stay independent. So, yeah, yeah. I see. So what do, can you share some of the projects that you have coming up in the future? So like you said, with, maybe we're going to see some Rivian stuff, maybe some of the stuff that you'll be able to share. Yeah, yeah. so the Rivian, we'll, we'll be definitely doing that. The Cybertruck, we have a Cybertruck on order that we'll tear apart. We have a ID4 on order for that, to look at that. Um, I'd like to try and get a, um, a couple of Chinese vehicles. Ooh, we, uh, Chinese. Yeah. they're difficult to get in right now, but, uh, but we'll, we'll try and do that. Um, Americans yeah. will accept Chinese vehicles. They will, What's that? Americans will accept Chinese vehicles. Are they going to be like, yes, oh, this is, no, no, uh, right this now? is, this is what's going to happen. So you're, you, you're a little young, so you won't remember this, but there used to be this thing called the Japanese invasion. Yes. It happened. Um, it happened in the 70s, 80s, that kind of a thing. And what boxes. happened was um, the big OEM said, "Oh, they'll never amount to anything. Let them have the small cars. Uh, people are going to want big, giant." Well, guess what? There was an oil embargo, and uh, the Japanese went from zero um, zero market share, and uh, they basically gobbled up a huge portion of the American market. Same thing is going to happen with the Chinese. The Chinese are going to show up. And by the way, they make really nice cars. I have, I, I used to, I, I, I didn't do anything last year as far as China was concerned, but as a rule, I did, um, I, I spent about three months a year in China. I was doing a lot of work in China. And I will tell you every car that I got that was Chinese made, Now, it might have been it might have been a uh, you know a BMW or whatever, but in essence, it was a Chinese vehicle that was made in China for Chinese market, 
and it was as good as anybody. Right now, um, if you talk to different people, they'll tell you different things. But if you have a car that's made in Canada or Mexico, as a rule, it's going to be better than what you made in, in the United States. Really? I don't know why, but the gaps are better and uh, the quality is higher and things like that. Maybe it's because they, I don't know why. But anyway, there you go. Um, wait until, but if you buy a, a, a Japanese car that's made here in the U.S. or a Korean car that's made here in the U.S., or a BMW that's made here in the US, I'll put it up against anybody on the planet. Anybody, it doesn't matter who. So wait until you see the Chinese cars that are gonna come swinging in. I'm gonna be telling you right now, there won't be funny gaps. There won't be, uh, there won't be anything where one door panel is green and the other one's blue. None of that stuff is gonna happen because they've been trained by the best and they will be primo kind of vehicles and people will as aspire to them. They will they will want those cars, and that's kind of um, that's kind of like what you're going to see in the very near future. Very okay. near future. I mean, they're going to come in real soon, and a lot sooner than than the uh, the guys in the ivory towers at the big OEMs are going to be ready for. And it and um, by the way, I'm not just talking about U.S. car manufacturers. I'm talking about the Europeans as well. They are going to get shocked, really, really shocked at what yeah. uh, what's going to be coming in from the Chinese. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And and we won't care that they are Chinese because aren't they kind of like we're not so friendly with them. Like it's a brand new. Uh, <sighs> well, Trump was unfriendly brand. with them, but um, <laughs> he cost me a lot of money. I did vote for him the first time, but um, mm -mm. Yeah. but uh, I uh, I didn't vote the second time. Yeah. At, uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, Trump was trying to turn back the hands of time, and you can't do that. Time and tide, they don't work. So if somebody would have, say, done something in, um, in the Clinton era uh, about uh, shutting down China, that might have worked then, but you can't do it now. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of people that said, don't wake the sleeping giant. And the sleeping giant is China. And they did. And what do you do now? You you suffer the consequences. And by the way, they're not going to go away like Japan did when their their economy blew up because of um, because of a um, a real estate bubble. Um, China can't blow up. It's there's billions of people there, and they've got tons and tons of backing, and they they own all the reserves. Our yeah. biggest problem here in the U.S. is um, Everything has been sold or we don't do it. So I don't know if you heard, but GM uh, is going to lose about a billion dollars this quarter because it can't get chips. Why can't they get chips? Oh, because China ain't selling them. That's right. And uh, I'm telling you. shortage. Yeah. The, yeah. And then batteries. Okay. What are batteries made out of? Lithium. Uh, where do we get lithium? Not here. Not here. And what else do we need? Oh, we, we need cobalt. We need this. Side. Well, who owns all the mines? Nobody here. That's all Chinese owned. All Chinese owned. I mean, even if it's not frankly, in China, we right? painted herself in a corner with uh, with raw materials. So, yeah, and that's why Elon's plan to source the stuff here, the raw materials in the United States and yeah. Nevada or something, is is genius, right? I mean, that's the only way that he's gonna probably be able to compete. Yeah. Well, a lot of people, like myself included, um, I feel that. Um, Elon is probably going to buy the um, the uh, nickel mine um, up in um, uh, up in Canada, and um, he's already said I'm going to go and buy um, lithium clay. Now I'm not familiar with that um, that that type of mining. Normally it's open open pit mining, but one of the biggest um, areas for lithium and all kinds of other rare earth materials is um, is basically called the badlands between Canada and the United States. There's tons of stuff, uh, but we can't refine it. And the reason we can't refine it is because people say, oh, it's bad for the environment. Really? You know, it's bad for the unemployment. <laughs> unemployment is bad for the environment. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of like what we're going to be looking at. If we don't start looking at, you know, sometimes you have to swallow hard on some of these things. And we definitely need to be mining and we definitely need to be 
processing and we definitely need to be creating batteries here, here. with our own materials yeah. and um and right now there's a bunch of countries not just the united states that are scrambling around trying to um either buy back or capture or expropriate um uh mines and whatnot that uh, that are owned by the chinese <clears throat> yeah so do you do you think so people don't won't care that these are chinese brands that are coming in they're just see a pretty car and they're going to be like eh, i want one oh, hang on a second what you have to do is you have to remember back so um <laughs> we had just ended a war with the japanese and uh -huh. And it wasn't a friendly kind of war. I mean, yeah, if you've yeah. ever stayed up really late watching um, aerial TV, <clears throat> you can see all kinds of John Wayne movies and, you know, bonsai this and shoot guys there. At the end of the day, my dad, <laughs> he said there was no way that any Japanese car, he's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of expletives there, was <laughs> yeah. ever going to come into his property, ever, never. Um. Okay. And I remember <clears throat> when I was working as a tool maker, <clears throat> guy drove a Japanese car into the um, into our parking lot. So the first thing that happened was um, somebody took this guy's tools and threw them out into the ditch. Okay. If you're a tool maker, you don't want anybody screwing with your tools. <clears throat> so they threw all his tools in a ditch and then about eight of them picked his car up and took it into a vacant lot and left it over there. And you know what? There was a ditch all the way around it. It was very difficult for him to get that car out and no one would help him. That's kind of like what you had for uh, like animosity. And that was in Canada. That was wow. like, I came from Canada. That was a, that's a place where you can get in a lot of trouble uh, by discriminating, <clears throat> a lot of trouble. Like it's career ending. Thank you. <clears throat> and here we go, gentlemen. I uh, I have to do this, or I'm gonna be coughing my brain. <laughs> oh yeah, <coughs> coughing my brains out. Oh no, yeah, I got to take the medicine. I do, but you only got three minutes. <clears throat> so, what's your what's your wrap up strategy? Well, I just no. I mean, I I want to thank you for being here and showing us a little bit of yeah, no your <laughs> of yep. your knowledge. Uh, we're fans, and we <clears throat> are tuned in to what you're doing. Um, and yeah, we appreciate Thank all you. the work that you're doing. You recently had uh, the chance to uh, interview Elon, and you you've uh, published that in your channel, right? What's it? Your channel is just Sandy Monroe. No, it's uh, Monroe. No, it's uh, M U N R O L I V E. So Monroe Live. Monroe uh, Live. Dot com, and uh, or if you just type in Monroe Live YouTube, you can get it there as well. So now, uh, now, I mean, we haven't even been up for a year yet. And we have, um, uh, according to what I'm just reading here, 154,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Yeah. Elon's thing got 2 million hits. I mean, a lot of them are You're creeping blowing up, up to a million hits. You know? You're blowing up. I could see your 100 million, uh, uh, 100,000 uh, subscriber button on the back there of your, on your wall. What? Uh, that's the, uh, the button that YouTube gives you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, Look sorry. Yeah, I... Okay, so yes, I um, yes we got that. Um, that's all because of one guy here, uh, Corey Steuben. Um, he's yeah. the president um, <clears throat> of Monroe, and um, so when we tore apart the Model Three uh, in 2018 or 2017 or whenever it was, uh, my son works for the company, and um, and he's in marketing, and he really wanted us to get into YouTube, but of course, all the engineers said. What no. for? That's ridiculous. <laughs> so we didn't. But this time, um, when Corey got promoted, and by the way, Corey's relatively young. Um, yeah. He's half my age. So he's, I think he's 33. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, 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 he was the one who said, hey, I think we should go and do YouTube. And uh, we got the car the day of the shutdown. And, um, and we, uh, <clears throat> we had... <clears throat> we had everybody working from home. Like, I mean, these are all engineers and they all got tools at home. So they, uh, <clears throat> just a second. So let this be a warning to you, children. <clears throat> <laughs> Don't sing in bars. 
<laughs> for long periods of time. Otherwise, you're going to wind up with the, um, what's the name of that woman, Julia, whatever. Who's the Sound of Music? The, Ju uh, the uh, Julie Andrews. Sound of Music. Julie, Julie Andrews. Andrews. There you yeah. go. Yeah. She got the same thing. Yeah. And uh, so I can go and get that operation. <clears throat> But she wound up uh, unable to sing. Actually, she can't even talk. She only talks about a whisper. Oh, so no. uh, I look at that and say, if she got screwed, why should I fool around with this? But yeah. at the end of the day, um, what was I talking about? YouTube, Anyways, YouTube is that? the future. YouTube is the future. The future. Yeah, well, You're going to be a big YouTuber. Your channel is growing. It's growing. It's going to blow up. Yeah. Your last video got 2 million views. That's crazy. It took me like two years to get two million views on one of my videos, and you just really? went ahead and did what, it. What did you What did you do it on to get a million I, views? I did a DIY power wall, so I basically show people oh. how to get old batteries, put them together, <laughs> throw them up in the wall, connect them, and then that took about two years to get two million views. But it's got wow. two million views, and you just went ahead and did it just by having a conversation with Elon, and Elon seems to like you. By the way, he seems to respect. Your work, right? Uh, and it, I'm honored. It was, it was very evident in that video, and it was pretty. I enjoyed watching that. Uh, it was a side of you ask different questions. I think that regular people ask from him, and yeah, that was that was a good job there. Um, oh, yeah, cool. we're Great. fans, and uh, we hope the, all the success to you in the future. And maybe we Thank can you. have you again whenever you get that Rivian or the Cybertruck or whatever, and then you can tell us a little bit about what you find. And we're all interested in that stuff. So we're fans cool. over here. <laughs> okay, well, um, thank you very much for having me on your show. Um, I will tell you one thing, though. Um, normally, I don't give a rat's ass for what anybody thinks of me, but if um, if Elon Musk thinks I'm okay, uh, you know what? That's that's high praise, and I'm, I'm extremely honored. I really yeah. am. I mean, this is like the richest guy in the world, and probably, to me, the only um, the only hero in the in the states. So I'm I'm very honored and honored to be on your show as well. Thank you thank so much you. for inviting me. Yeah, no, thank you for showing up and giving us a little bit of your time. All right, thank Sandy, you. we'll you. see you next time. Okay. Absolutely. Bye, Bye guys. Have a great night. <clears throat> bye bye. Cheers.